Right, welcome back everybody. And everybody's piling in the door after getting their ice creams. Uh, welcome back to one and all. Um, there was um, one or two other people that are watching this evening. Um, Jan, of course, who's usually with us. And um, there was Chris Peen and... I was told somebody else, and it'll come to me in a minute. Um, um, but um, I'm trying to remember the proper name, but uh, it'll come to me anyway. So welcome back. I hope you've all enjoyed the first half seeing other people's uh, images. Um, I'm not sure that I said uh, good evening to Diva actually earlier unless you joined us just after the, we started. So, um, good evening, Diva. Um, so, yeah, we, um, we've we had some very good images uh, already. We've got another four people, just so that the members who are the newer members, there's um, eight people within the committee, uh, all doing a superb job during the year in their own right. So, um, thank you to all of the committee members, if you're listening at the moment, for what you do for the club. So, um, we, we're just about up to time. We've got another minute. So, um, as I say, we've got some more great images to come. Some phone images. Um, some more technical ones and I'm just looking through them at the moment and then some more phone ones and I've left mine till last so um, it uh, it'll just give you some great images um, we are just a little bit lower but it's going up so I'll give it another couple of minutes because um, we normally do sort of start at quarter past so people may just think that um, they may just think that they are coming back at the normal time. So I don't want anybody to miss the images. Um, so let me just tear a bit of paper off and get rid on my sheet so that I can see and turn the pages a little bit easier. Um, what else have I got to tell you? Had a semi satisfying week up in Scotland it was it was a family um, when I say family I've got a, a, a single daughter uh, when I say a single daughter I mean one that's not married and she is in our bubble so we were able to go the three of us with my wife her and myself and it's the first time she's been up to that area and so consequently um, consequently we showed us some of the places that I take people to and what we do. And there is one particular place for those people that have been, and not many people have actually been up to this place, but um, to the actual village of Findhorn itself. Um, my daughter's absolutely fell in love with that place, so um, she was really taken with it. So, um, Good evening, Viv welcome this evening i didn't have time to um say hello earlier so a big welcome to you uh, i think everybody else is um i've said good evening to anyway so um but yeah just to finish off scotland didn't take many pictures um because it was uh, a bit of a busy week but um i did get a few as some of you saw on facebook tried to do something a little bit different this time it's always good to try something different so right we'll make a bit of a start now we're back up to numbers so um, the next pictures that I'm going to show you are Neil's which are the uh, Neil is our media um, guru um, so uh, he does all of our Facebook, um, Instagram, and Twitter, etc. 
and we near enough one way or another we near enough get an image a day from him so he's a, a busy member of the uh, committee as well so right we'll go on now and i'll just set the first one going so neil's first image is old steamer now what neil did tell me that um he uh, he did have a little spell earlier in the year when he when he wasn't too well so he's not been out to take a tremendous amount of images so quite a few of these uh, of these images are what were taken on his phone he has a uh, one plus phone and um so these um and i don't i'm just looking through the comments no it doesn't say what's taken on a camera and what's taken on a phone but some of these are phone images so the first one is old steamer it was taken at the lincolnshire steam rally and uh, quite a nice low perspective on that one you know got um got a little bit no lower it's nearly his initials on the funnel there well and for neil anyway number two is shift change so um couple arriving to have a bit of a change with the driver um the rider ex driver etc um this one was taken on the north york moors railway so surprising how many members actually do take um um steam images one way or another even though some more so than others but um a lot of people do take them this third one is better check it's working <laughs> definitely taken at cramwell aviation heritage museum so and it is i do feel and i said it earlier that some images do really um look good when they are converted you know you might just think well that's a a sign of the ejection seat thing but it it gives you all the rest of it the you begin to see the bits of rust and everything that it shows up in black and white snow puppy ah oh, i hope it's well um well out of the way of the blooming fireworks tonight so ours is but it doesn't matter too much nowadays with ours because poor old lass is going a little bit deaf snow puppy it was taken in a friend's garden um so possibly a, a a phone image don't know what it is wish upon the moon taken this one does say taken on my phone in whitby earlier this year yeah we can just see it there quite a nice image that because at the end of the day it would be hard to get the sky with the detail on the foreground as well pretty prickles you're trying me there aren't you neil pretty prickles taken at work um because for those of you who don't know neil is at scotland nurseries and uh, taken at work with my phone no doubt in a macro setting or a close-up setting sultry succulent okay you really are trying me also taken at work on the phone and that one of course you can see because of the ratios um, that it is more a full frame phone shot and if all of you didn't know and i, I presume most of you do your phone you can of course in in phone change your um aspect ratio so it's not you don't have to stick with what you've got drip drip drop that's good that just them three little doubles there yes you guessed it taken on my phone at work <laughs> number nine metal tree this one is not taken at work taken at donnington hall sculpture exhibition so 
And once again, I think that one lends itself very well to the black and white treatment. Mighty Meddler, taken in the guards, uh, sorry, in the gardens at Donington Hall. Nuts and Bolts Beauty. Yeah, it's very, very clever how this is done. For those of you who saw my images on the Facebook um, members uh, club page, I took a picture of a cow, um, Highland cow. I was going to say one of them hairy cows up in Scotland, a Highland cow, and it was totally made up of chain and metal, and it really looked good. So, metal uh, tree taken at Donington Hall Sculpture Exhibition. Let me just check if I got that one right. No, that was that was that one, Mighty Meddler. So this, sorry, this one is Nuts and Bolts Beauty taken at Donington Hall Sculpture Exhibition. So, yeah, I was there. Gorilla on Guard. Some great detail in that, isn't they? Yes. Taken at Donington Hall Sculpture Exhibition again. So, but the detail in that is phenomenal. Right through to the background. A dish of the day taken at the old RAF Stenigot. Yeah, we went as a club uh, up there for two years, maybe three years ago. And there was all of them there at that time. And then, as some of you will know, all of a sudden, three of them disappeared within a day or two. So I'm not too sure who or why. A change in the weather taken from my mum's garden. Looking upwards, of course. Yeah, that's a, certainly the old cloud rolling in there. Morecambe Bay, taken whilst on holiday this year. Once again, there's some great detail in that stone, isn't there? And I like the sweeping angle leading you out to sea. So, nice one. Charlotte's Web, also taken whilst on the holiday this year. Lovely spiders, aren't they? Catnapping, taken whilst once again visiting mother. That's quite nice actually because you can just see the eyes there and not the actual eyes but the um, eyes and the start of the nose. Admiring the engineering, a candid moment taken on the Vale of Rydal Railway. Well I hope I got that right, Rydal, Rydal railway thank you very much for those neil uh very much appreciated that um once again as with the other committee members that you were able to get us a selection of your images in so thank you very much neil i'm sure that everybody can uh, will go along with me and say some great images especially the the phone images as well so right we're going to move over now to jill and Jill's going to read her own comments out and so I'll hand you over to Jill and uh, we'll uh, see some of Jill's photographs. Over to you Jill. Thank you. Uh, good evening everyone. I'm sure most of you know me um, but for any of our newer members who don't I'm the one that keeps bugging you about your competition images. <laughs> uh, I, I do like black and white photography and usually I like the really deep blacks with the gritty uh, backgrounds uh, that replicate the old prints. But unfortunately, the judges don't seem to agree with me and tend to mark me down. So I've tried to do something a little bit different tonight. So um, I've done them in Photoshop and then I've converted them in silver effects. And I've just tweaked the, the different sliders and that. And... Well, we'll see if you like them. 
Um, mine are all of people. I like doing some street photography. I enjoy walking around town, taking photos and just watching people. Sometimes you catch people doing different things, interesting things. Other times they're just going about their own business. But whatever it is, I enjoy doing it. So hopefully you will too. This first one is Artist at Work. I was walking through the cathedral grounds when I saw this. Um, and he just took my eye and I waited a while because he was staring and not doing anything. And eventually he picked up his pencil to start sketching. And that's when I got him. Thank you. Next one, Graham. Artist number two. This was at the other end of the cathedral. Um, I think there must have been the university or the college art uh, department out that day because there was quite a few people sketching all around the cathedral. Um, I just like the shapes here with the arch of the wall and also the shadow coming down from the girl that was doing the sketching. Next one, please. Uh, I've called this one social distancing. It seems to uh, sum up the sign of the times at the moment. Uh, two people with the backs to each other, both engrossed on their mobile phones. Um, I just liked it. It caught my eye and so I snapped it. Next one, please, Graham. Keeping in touch. This is an older one that I took a few years ago. Again, uh, just walking down the high street by the old boots um, shop that's now boarded up. This lady was sitting on the bench. She'd obviously done her shopping. She's got her carrier bags there with all her food or whatever in. She parked her bicycle up and she decided to get in touch with somebody on her mobile phone. Again, just another thing that I quite liked. Next one, please. Uh, this I've called the busker packing up. I did actually have a colour version of this in Graham's uh, President's Challenge. Um, I liked it. I liked the detail in his hands. I liked the shape of him sitting there. I know he's not actually playing anything or singing. And he's actually, I think he's just packing up ready to go. But I loved his hair. I just loved the whole thing about him. So uh, it just took my fancy. Thank you. Uh, next one, please. This is taking on fuel halfway up Steep Hill. Um, this is a little bit darker. It's more to the type that I usually do. I have tried to redo it, but um, I still have ventured over to how, how I prefer to do it. But um, I was catching my breath halfway up Steep Hill and I noticed these three people sitting on the bench. So I got myself into the shop doorway out the way and waited while they weren't looking at me to take the photo. I just love the way that the one person that looks as though he could do with a good feed is the only person that's not eating. Um, next, please. This is passing under the bridge. It's, it's a little bit architecture and a little bit person shot. Um, I like the lines of the new bridge against the building in the background. Um, and just at that moment, this chap happened to walk along. So um, that's why I took it. Thank you. Next one, please. It's tiring being a steampunk dog. This was at the, the Lincoln Steampunk weekend uh, a couple of years ago now. And I was walking along and I just happened to come up behind this guy who was carrying his dog with a very fetching hat on. And the poor dog looks tired out and I love dogs and this just caught my eye. So I couldn't resist taking it. Thank you. Next one, please. Next one, please, Graham. Uh, monochrome Madness. I didn't really have to do too much to this one because they, uh, the guy's uniform and the lady's outfit was totally black and white anyway. So it was just a case of uh, converting it slightly and bringing up the whites a little bit. Um, I just thought they looked very smart. Some of the uniforms and the outfits that they wear at the Steampunk Weekend are absolutely fantastic. Next one, please, Graham. Uh, this is my Steampunk Darth Vader. I don't know whether he's supposed to be Darth Vader or not, but he, he reminded me of him. Um, just another one with a great uniform. Uh, I like the detail in the coat. Um, and I also <laughs> like the mask on him. I thought it was good. Thank you. Next one, please. 
snap, that this was taken again at the same event. Um, I love the old camera and I just loved the way that the guy was stood holding it. And so I zoomed in um, and then converted it to black and white to take away any of the distracting colours that were in the background. Um, but this is one of my favourite shots. I, I really do like this one. Thank you, Graham. Next one, please. Uh, this is a stall holder from the uh, Lincoln Annual Christmas Market that we usually have. Unfortunately, we won't be having that this year. Um, I just look at this guy. Is such a cheek. He reminds me of a cheeky chappy, and I just loved this. He had such a great smile, and he stood there for ages, just letting us take photos of him. Um, and another one that I converted to black and white. Uh, thank you, Graham. Next one, please. Downtown Gainsborough. Um, there's just something about it, and I can't tell you what it is, but the guy looks a bit, I wouldn't say he looks down at heel, but he looks a bit miserable and as though he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders and the building looks exactly the same. Um, so I just thought the two went together quite well. Thank you. Next one, please. Fish and chips on the beach. During... Um, usually oh, September, I go away for a couple of days with a friend of mine to take photos. And we were going away this year, but we couldn't. So what we did, we spent a day at the beach in Lincolnshire, and then we spent a day in Hull. So this was the day in Lincolnshire, and we made the mistake of going to Skegness to start with, and it was absolutely heaving. So we went down the road to Sutton-on-Sea, and... Uh, and it was a lot calmer, a lot more peaceful. And I caught these two people just sitting on the wall at the side of the beach, eating their fish and chips. And I thought, what more could anybody want? Sand, sea, sun, and salt and vinegar on your chips. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks. Next one, please, Graham. And this is my last one. Uh, I've called this one Patriotic Cuppa. Um, this is the day after we went Sutton on Sea, we went to Hull. And I don't know if you can remember a few uh, a few weeks ago now, I had a photo of a guy smoking a cigarette coming out of um, a gymnasium. And uh, I just thought it was absolutely great. Well, when I turned round from that opposite the gymnasium was this guy sitting there looking well, I don't know what he was looking. I don't know whether he couldn't believe his eyes of this guy coming coming out of the gym smoking either. But um, he sat there, so I took his photo. I don't know whether he was very happy, but uh, I enjoyed it. And that sums up all of mine. Thank you very much indeed, and thanks for bearing with me. Thank you very much, Jill. It um, certainly uh, some different images once again. Um, you know, we, we, we're getting a great selection. And that's the whole thing about being in as, you know, as a member of the club and being part of the club and seeing all of the different images. Um, we all have different things we like and we see them. So we're moving on to our vice chairman's pictures now, Ray. Um, Ray's once again got some great images i'm going to be reading his out um i've got um what have i got about 20 i think yeah 20 to go so and then we'll whip through mine excuse me just two secs <coughs> clear the throat um so for a start ray's put all of my photos shown here are taken in color and then converted in Apple Photo Edit, and I do believe I don't know a lot about uh, Apple, but um, I believe that's the standard um, free one or something that you get with it. I believe that a photo should not be converted to black and white unless that process enhances it in some way. All of these, except two, look better in black and white. I will tell you which ones. But he's not telling you now. We're going to tell you when we get to them. This first one is one that Ray put into a competition a few years ago. And it's called Can You Handle It? And this one was uh, taken at the time when Ray had uh, the Nikon 
camera gear and uh, it was taken at quite a high ISO, ISO 800 at a hundredth of a second. This one is dried plaster, plaster, pasta, sorry Ray, dried pasta. Once again, taken with a Nikon, um, quite a slow shutter speed this time, a sixtieth of a second. So Ray does quite a lot of these sort of um, uh, put together images, which uh, I always think afterwards, why did I think it's something like that? It was taken for a still life comp composition and I like the humour of it. Taken on my study floor. Early morning walk. Taken this time on an iPhone. So it's all been left to dev its own devices, the phone. Um, so no control by Ray at all. ISO 16. 6 millimeter 2.4 at a seven at what 2.4 117 12 seconds 117 yeah i'm just mi get myself mixed up there i love silhouettes a reasonable example i think left to rot just looking at that one we all know where that one is don't we um left to rot taken at gibraltar point just after the last lockdown GD was standing next to me, so I tried hard on this one. <laughs> you don't have to try hard, Ray. You do some great images anyway. <coughs> it's funny seeing them boats so low down after we visited recently and the water was just coming over the top. Number five, lights the way. Once again with the, I, uh, with the iPhone. Taken on underground somewhere. Saw this and liked it as platform empty, but didn't have my camera to hand. Very nice, sharp image from the uh, phone. Looking out to sea. Once again, ISO. Uh, sorry, iPhone. Uh, taken at South End on Sea. I had two four-year-olds with me, so I don't take the camera with me. I do always have my iPhone with me, though good detail again i must admit the um the small sensors on the phones do give you a hell of a depth of field morning walk this is back to the nikon lynx coast last year again silhouette i love the sparkly water nearly there nikon again the camera taken on moscow underground saw it took it when she was silhouetted at the top. Not in my backyard. iPhone picture. Taken from the castle walls. No camera as we had friends to stay. Always got that phone with me though. I like the detail in that one once again. Playing the spoons. Nikon 7.1. Um, <clears throat> ISO 100, 25th of a second. Once again, one of Ray's um, put-together images, uh, which always work well. And you think to yourself, why don't I think of something like that? One of the few desktop photos I've tried using everyday objects. Right on track. This is with a little Nikon Coolpix Compact. Um, 30th of a second. He does like slow shutter speeds, doesn't he? Some good images, though, from them. This is one that actually looks better in colour, but I needed another one for the black and white comp, so I've converted this one. It draws you in quite nicely. Stalker. Back to the big camera, the Nikon. Taken at Woodside Wildlife Park. I've been there loads of times with the grandkids. Just the right size park for their age. Took this through the wire at a distance so you can't see it with a shallow... Sorry. So, yeah, so you can't see it with a shallow depth of field. Stands the test of time. Just. Nick on again. 
very bright day and love this old staircase black and white seems to bring out features that are not so obvious in color street vagrant nikon again uh, higher iso this time iso 800 taken some distance away as he was the other side of railway track and i prefer if subjects like this don't see or interact with me love the character in his face national arboretum this is with the nikon but a nikon 5 one this time quite a high iso f11 four hundredths of a second iso 200 well worth a visit love the symmetry of this shot it works very well doesn't it the parrot has landed we're back to the nikon 71 another from woodside wildlife park this is a second one that is better in color but again i needed a black and white image for a competition love the shape of this bird the world's tallest nikon shot much more dramatic in black and white 18 millimeter because it is so tall at 2722 feet over half a mile tall i've always liked that image um ray has had it in a competition and i yeah uh, i like the image to where who knows Nikon shot taken on a hill walk to an old church view into the unknown looks like an abyss doesn't it um, Nikon camera taken at the North Sea Observatory obviously I tie up when I looked at it earlier I thought obviously why obviously not everybody knows that's a North Sea Observatory oh they do it's on the side <laughs> I tilted it up as much um, I titled it as such because it was so bright you could see what the lady was looking at watching the for predators Nikon camera an antelope type animal in the wild it was very wary of us and all that was around so those are near uh sorry those are ray's images thank you very much ray and uh, thank you very much uh, for entering into the spirit of the evening and getting these ready for us so that we could show people them right i've got no notes i must admit that um we've had um doreen graham and jill on this evening and I do think it flows a little bit easier when you're not actually reading from a sheet of paper. Um, so I've got no notes anyway because I thought I'd just say something about the pictures. Uh, but must thank the three of them for coming on and doing their own um, notes on their images. So thank you very much for joining me this evening and just breaking it up a little bit for me. Right, onwards and upwards with mine. What the hell's that they're saying? It's a colour picture. Well, the only reason that I put one colour picture in was because there is another image next to it. And I was going to emphasise what uh, Ray said, you know, about the difference in colour and black and white. And um, as you all know, I have this picture as my desktop um, image and from a color version to a black and white some work and some don't and i personally feel that this one is better in color so you know do try your images in black and white and you'll see that often the images pop and they they work and sometimes they don't but this is corgarth castle in scotland one of the areas that i go to with people and um so a uh, little castle that i like uh we we tried to get into it last time but it was closed because of the oncoming virus problems in march 
this is inside of the um, large church in uh, Boston and it uh, was just an interior shot taken with the Olympus and uh, I just tweaked it a little bit in um, in um, Photoshop um, now it was it was quite a distorted image with the uh, angle that I took it out so it has been straightened a little bit um, but the f the work that I've done to it is not filters it's um, just done in Photoshop with various sliders that's a larger picture of it um, from exactly the same position uh, I took the two images stood in the same foot space and um, I must admit I prefer this one a lot more um, like the others have said to you I do like to play with the uh, shadow slider and the black slider and the highlight sliders etc just to get the right elements into the image and there's something that I've got later that um, just emphasizes what a very slight tweak makes a difference this is the outside of the stump and um, this one there's two elements in this picture that instantly catch my eye um, the third one I took out uh, because it was a pigeon flying in the sky <laughs> but um, the lady on the right here <clears throat> she should be have been cloned out and I really crashed let me see if it'll catch up right I'm gonna to have to give it a minute just to see what it's going I've lost my picture let's get rid of the picture let's stop share let's start share let's find the picture again let's open oh god i'm right at the bottom of the pictures if you've caught up with me folks just hang on in there a minute because i'm just having to reset things so there's the picture share and i do believe that hopefully if somebody could let me know if somebody could let me know uh, That's fine, if you caught up with me let me just change the picture and see if it changes on YouTube yes it looks like you should if everybody if somebody can let me know if it's on YouTube Sue Argreaves is saying yes it you're back with me so great hopefully you are so I'll just move on uh, separation between the um, the actual church and that figure there so um, it, uh, it it should have had a bit of a gap there inside of the uh, believe this one was once again Boston stump I'll make it uh, full screen that should come up full screen now um, so this was just another interior shot uh, I do like the like Graham said about the Batolfs um, the l little bit of light entering in the top this is one place that I absolutely love going to and taking pictures it isn't misty at all at the bottom that is just the height of the waves at the time that I was taking the picture so there's some depth in the uh, the water and that's why you look like you've got the inch of um, mist at the bottom but it is actually the waves as are crashing against the rocks once again I like that one in color and I also like it in black and white uh, this the sky smoothed itself out because of course the long exposure you get the sky smoothing itself out as well as the water 
This was one that was up at the top of the Cairngorms. Um, this is the near the ski centre and you had to stand with your legs apart and face the wind otherwise you just couldn't stand up. It was blowing a hoolie and this one had quite a lot of text you put into it and um, a little bit of dehaze just to give it this gritty effect and I just like the way it works so um, it just looks nice and that's looking in the opposite direction so um, just at the bottom here you can just see um, it looks like steam coming out of a building but in actual fact it's um, the blowing snow um, because they do create snow in the places where it um, uh, where it wears out or melts a bit etc so another one just to show you all the shapes of the fencing where the different levels of depending upon what level you are um, which one you come down and in the foreground right at the very bottom in the middle of the picture you can see the vernicular railway line unfortunately the vernicular railway has had to cease because the line is now unsafe and they want something like about two or three million pounds to get it up and going again and nobody will pay for it at this time which has had a big effect on the cafe up at the top which is the ptarmigan cafe because of course unless you go on the ptarmigan sorry on the funicular railway you can't get up there this is Cleethorpes. This one was taken only three weeks ago, something like that. And uh, there was some good cloud, so I, um, I I thought I'll take a few pictures of the pier. Um, and I just like that one, and I like it in black and white. This is a rock on Cullen Beach up in Scotland. Um, I like the way it just projects out into the sky and I've let the long exposure take care of that water again. Maybe that one could do possibly with a little bit of um, a bit more darkness in the rock. Maybe, maybe not. Doorway. Um, doorway in uh, I'm gonna have to minimize it now because I can't remember where it was no it just says doorway um, I can't remember where that was it could have been Boston stump again uh, I do like taking picture doorways the dark wood always does good for a black and white image so this was Fortrose Cathedral uh, sorry Abbey when I get it right let me check. Cathedral. Um, very small place, but uh, it was a lovely bright day when we was there, and the light was really good on it. And I just thought I'll convert one to black and white. And I love that, uh, that particular place. I, if it wasn't in the middle of a town, I would love to go back and light paint it one night. Maybe possible. This is a little bit like Ray's. Um, well not like it it's the same boat just that I took mine the opposite way round and just placed the boat between the two anchors in the background there and then I just put a softness to it just to give it a little bit of a different effect now some would say well it's a very grey image but that's the effect that I wanted on this occasion so you don't have to have really sharp blacks and really white whites but you have to make sure that whatever treatment you give the black and white makes the image work once again i've played with this one uh, this of course is um, same place gibraltar point tides out um, and uh, i just like thought i'll just put a vignette on it but this time rather than putting a a dark vignette on it I've put a, a white soft vignette on it and it just uh, it just 
makes it look different. So you wouldn't want to go down there in the mud, would you? Another one's looking the opposite way. And once again, just a little bit of treatment just to make it look a little bit soft. Um, you can see that the image is sharp in the center there on the water. Um, but I just wanted the outside of the image, the grasses, just to go soft. So um, just did a few tweaks on the sliders to make it go soft. A little bit of chain. Um, just laid in on the ground in the grasses. And I thought that one will work once again in black and white. Now, I'll be very honest. I have cloned one or two bits of grass out that went across the top of the chain because I didn't want the distraction of the grasses going across the center of the chain so I just thought it worked better this way right these are the two that I've done two pictures of of the pulpit uh, once again this is in Boston and um, this was virtually as taken and I've not done a lot to it but just by a quick tweak it's just taken the darker tones darker and given a little bit more punch to the all of the walls behind it so your first image that one is the one as taken and then just a quick tweak and it makes the walls all a little bit sharper a little bit more defined um, so one last look that's as taken and that's the one just tweaked a little bit just giving a little bit more definition Tatshul Castle um, we had a ride around one day the club did and we went to various places uh, Tatshul Castle was closed but we thought you can't be so close and not take a picture and I must admit I like this one um, skywise the brickwork and everything else um, it's uh, I, I just like the way it all works and it works well in black and white the two anchors that you saw earlier and uh, I don't know who it is but one camera member camera club member in the background there now I didn't take that person out because I thought they were just in the right position to leave in it's not a distracting element to me so I just thought no I'm not going to get take it out just leave that in it's another element to um, to show people what's happening so and I'm pressing the button and there's no more so let me just make sure yeah that's my last image folks um, once again as with everybody else's image I hope you've enjoyed all of the images this evening been a little bit different to have a whole evening on black and white when it's not a competition um, I'll just say thank you very much once again to Doreen to Graham and to Jill for giving their comments and thank you all for sticking with us and uh, we can uh, just say cheerio to graham doreen and jill uh, good night everybody good night. Hi. thanks for watching yeah so quick uh, quick one from all of those i'm going to say cheerio to you all thank you very much indeed um some nice comments coming in from people so stay safe until next week make sure you check the email for what's happening next week i think it might be a talk from caroline Steele. Uh, i think that's next week yeah i'm getting some nods so that's great so we'll be talking to you during the week caroline so thank you very much everybody thank you to our speakers this evening cheerio for now and we'll see you all next week bye bye